Good day, and thank you for watching the ACS Library. My name is Kyle, and my goal is to help you prepare for the private pilot check ride for free in just five minutes a day. In today's video, we cover takeoff distances. Today, we will discuss the Cessna 172 Skyhawk. In the following videos, we discuss the Piper Archer and the Diamond DA-40. Anytime we're talking performance calculations, we'll want to have our aircraft's POH handy. Open up to the table of contents and find the performance section. Once we've turned to the performance section, let's jump into the table of contents and look for takeoff distance data. Takeoff distances are affected by aircraft weight, so it's very important that we find our aircraft's expected takeoff weight prior to performing these calculations. Today, let's assume that we're taking off near maximum takeoff weight, or 2,300 pounds. Before diving into the chart, we must read through the notes. The distances below were determined using proper short field technique. This means that if we plan to perform a normal or soft field takeoff, we can expect our takeoff distance to be greater than these listed values. A full rich mixture is used for takeoffs from fields below 3,000 feet MSL. And above that altitude, mixture should be lean to peak RPM. If you are unfamiliar with how to lean for peak RPM, please ask your instructor to show you how next time you're in the plane together. It's important stuff and will keep your spark plugs from fouling, which translates to decreased risk of an in-flight engine failure or loss of thrust. We decrease distances by 10% for each 9 knots of headwind, and increase by 10% for each 2 knots tailwind. For this example, let's assume our runway would cause us to expect a 16 knot headwind component during takeoff. If you are unfamiliar with how to find your headwind and crosswind components, please check out my video over crosswind component calculations linked below, where I explain how to do it with nothing but your iPhone calculator and a local METAR. We'll decrease our takeoff distance by 10% per 9 knots of headwind. We have 16 knots headwind. Let's plan to decrease the distance by only 15% rather than 20%, leaving us with a bigger buffer for any imperfections during takeoff. Lastly, dry grass runways increase the ground roll distance by 15%. These numbers are to remain unadjusted when taking off from paved runways. Ground roll refers to the distance required for an aircraft to accelerate from the fully stopped position to lift off speed. Distance to clear a 50-foot obstacle takes it a little further. You've probably guessed by now that this is the distance an aircraft would require to go from fully stopped to takeoff speed, plus the distance required to climb over a 50-foot obstacle. We should pay especially close attention to both figures when operating from relatively short fields or those with obstacles at the departure end. These takeoff distances are determined by four factors. Winds, weight, pressure altitude, and temperature. For winds, we mentioned at the beginning of the video that we expect a headwind component of 16 knots. We also mentioned, for weight, that we would use the maximum for this example. Let's say that pressure altitude at Imagination Land Airport today, based on the altimeter setting reported in the METAR, is roughly 3,300 feet. I will include a link in the description to a video describing how to find pressure altitude. For this example, we will select data from 3,000 feet as that is the nearest value to 3,300. Our temperature for this example, based on today's METAR at Imagination Land, is 29 degrees Celsius, which will round up to 30 degrees. Once we've done this, we are left with our expected ground roll of 1,185 feet and our distance to clear a 50-foot obstacle at 2,115 feet. Remember that we must decrease these distances by 15% each, or in other words, multiply each value by 0.85, or 85% leaving us with these final distances of 1,010 feet for our expected ground roll and 1,800 feet to clear the 50-foot obstacle. These expected distances should be compared to our runway lengths to determine whether or not conditions would make for a safe takeoff. To recap, the steps necessary to determine takeoff distances for the Cessna 172 that have been discussed in this video are as follows. Step 1. Find the takeoff distance chart based on expected aircraft weight. 2. Read the notes. Three. Plug in pressure altitude and outside air temperature. 4. Read the matching ground roll and 50-foot obstacle clearance distances. 5. Adjust those distances for wind. And 6. Compare these distances to available runway length. This concludes today's video covering determining takeoff distance in the Cessna 172 Skyhawk. As always, thank you so much for checking out the ACS library. If you've learned something from today's video, I hope that you might like or share it. If you're interested in seeing more, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to the right of that to enable notifications. Questions and feedback are always welcome in the comments section. Thanks again and safe flying.